In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. I wear red today during the Easter season because we celebrate St. Stanislaus, who is not St. Stanislaus Papchinski, but St. Stanislaus of Krakow, who lived in the 12th century, I believe, or 11th century. Um, my dates are a little off, probably, but it's around that time, and he is the patron saint of Poland <laughs> in that he laid down his life for Christ in witness to the truth of Christ in dealing with King Boleslaus II, I believe that's the person. He suffered martyrdom at his hands um, in defense of the truth of Christ. Let us begin Mass as we always do by recognizing our sins, recognizing the time when we have failed to witness properly to our Lord in this life. We ask God now for his pardon and his peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give light to your church by adorning blessed Stanislaus with the victory of martyrdom, graciously grant that as he imitated the Lord's passion, so we, so we may, by following in his footsteps, be worthy to attain eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the court of officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus Though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree, God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they became infuriated and wanted to put them to death. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them and from all their distress he rescues them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sent speaks the words of God. He does not ration his gift of the Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given everything over to him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. But whoever disobeys the Son will not see life. But the wrath of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord. The one word that captures the theme of today's readings and today's feast day is witness, witness. And this is appropriate because the word witness involves the virtue of faith. And Easter and the Easter season which we are in, the Easter season isn't over with on Easter Sunday, nor is it over with after the octave of Easter but the Easter season continues all the way until when? Pentecost. And so the Easter season actually helps us to prepare for Pentecost. But anyway, the great virtue that we celebrate during the celebration of Easter and the Easter season is faith. And faith is about believing not only that there is a God, not only that God has spoken, but the truth of what God has revealed. And Jesus, or I would say, how do we believe or what do we believe by? What do we believe about God? The means by which we believe God and believe about God are by the word that is spoken. And that word became flesh and dwelt among us. It's Jesus. Jesus came into the world to witness to the truth about God, specifically revealing his Father, and then towards the end of his life, he would speak about the Holy Spirit. Jesus came to reveal the inner life of the Trinity. So when he says that um, he testifies to what Jesus says about him, he testifies to what he has heard, seen and heard. What is that about? It's about Jesus, who is the second person of the Trinity, the eternally, the eternal begotten Son of the Father. He comes and he just reveals the eternal life with the Father that he has lived through all eternity. In other words, he is witnessing to the truth of his, quote, experience of God. And he is God. So he's cut, and I use the term experience in quotes because it's not exactly like we experience things. Um, you wouldn't say God necessarily experiences because he doesn't have a body. So it's a, I just use the term experience um, very loosely, analogously, very loosely. But that Jesus comes and with his divine personality, he expresses the truth of God because he has, so to speak, experienced the truth of God because he is God and he lives in the communion with the Father and the Holy Spirit. So this is what Jesus did, does. He is the first witness, if you will, to the truth of God. And then you have, in the first reading, you have the apostles being witnesses to Jesus. So the apostles experience in a human way, in a 100% human way, the truth of Jesus. Therefore, the truth of the word becoming flesh, the truth of God. The apostles witnessed life with Jesus. They saw everything that he did. They heard everything that he preached. All the incredible 
acts that he did, the deeds, the words, all that. And then it became confirmed with the resurrection, and then the power of the Holy Spirit gave them the light, the gift of faith, to be able to see and understand more deeply and truly all that Jesus said, did, and revealed. They were, the, the, the apostles became true disciples of our Lord. And therefore, their task was to go out and witness to these truths, to proclaim to the nations who God is in the truth of his inner life. Because what faith teaches us is what our natural reason cannot tell us. Our natural reason can tell us that we can come through our natural reason to, through a lot of effort to understand that God exists. We can come to understand some of his attributes, like that God is good, God is powerful. We can come to understand these things, you know, by looking at the world, that God's pretty smart to design the world the way he's done it. God is wise. But we can't understand the inner life of God. We can't understand that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We can't understand just how merciful he is. God has to come and tell us about himself. And that happens through Jesus. Like I said, he witnesses to the truth of who God is. And then man experiences this truth, and he gets changed by this truth, and then he goes out and proclaims this truth. That's what the apostles are doing. So they're witnessing to all that. But they reach a little snafu, don't they? Because not, just like Jesus says, no one accepts his testimony. Not everybody wants to accept what I have to say. <laughs> Even though I'm God and I, I deliver the truth of God, nobody really wants to believe. Or not, you know, not everybody doesn't want to believe, but not everybody does. There are people who don't. And so the apostles, just like the master, just like the Lord, as the Lord experienced hardness of hearts, so the apostles encountered the hardness of hearts. But yet they had to keep witnessing. That's why they said, we must obey God rather than men. We must obey God rather than men. And that truth will resound not only during their age, but through all ages will that truth resound. And that's where we come to, for example, the life of St. Stanislaus. St. Stanislaus had the, uh, as the Bishop of Krakow, pretty important leadership role in the church in Poland, and he had to deal with this guy named King Boleslaus II. And by the way, it was in the 11th century. King Boleslaus lived between 1030 and 1079 AD. And St. Stanislaus had the um, unpleasant task, if you will, of having to correct the king. Just like Thomas Becket had to correct King Henry, um, no, excuse me, that's Thomas More, had to correct King Henry VIII. Just like Thomas Becket had to correct, had to witness against the King of England. Just like um, John, St. John the Baptist had to stand up against Herod and his immoral life. Sometimes witnessing the faith means that we have to um, have unpleasant conversations with people. But you have to be careful with that. You know, you have to make sure that charity is your motive and you're not taking out the hammer and beating people over the head with it. You know, um, the bishop, though, as the leader of the church, because, well, let me, let me back up. What does, you know, because we're not obligated to go out and like shout from the rooftops all the time about our faith. That's not, you know, we're not to go to, to, to walk into the, if you work or, you know, you go out into, to shopping, you go out to the mall or whatever, you're not to go out with a, with a, with a, with a bullhorn or whatever, or, or a megaphone or a you know, speaker and, you know, start reading, reading from the Bible. 
You know, we're, we're not called to do that. You don't have to do that. But we are called to give an external expression of our faith when what? When the honor of God demands it or the good of our neighbor demands it. And so King or St. Stanislaus, when you have a political leader who is giving a bad example in the faith and possibly scandalizing the faithful, right? or you see that God's honor is being harmed, then we have an obligation. That's when we are called to witness to our faith. And this becomes especially true for leaders of the church who have to deal with other secular authorities. And that's what St. Stanislaus did. He called out King Boleslaus for some of his policies that were deemed to be immoral. Um, some of the unjust wars that King Boleslaus was fighting, and also just the immoral life that he was leading. And so St. Stanislaus had the, the, the vocal gift, the, vo the, the courage to be able to call that out. Now, I want to make the point that in this day and age, some people can get all huffy and puffy and get their cages rattled a little bit, if like a priest or a bishop would, were happen to criticize a current day political leader or leaders for various positions that they would have. And the refrain is, oh, you're getting into politics, ooh. Well, we have the right to weigh into um, politics as priests, as you know, bishops, if it has to do with correcting policies or political judgments that are morally harmful or scandalous to the faithful. We have a right to do that. We, would have, we have a right, for example, to criticize various Catholic politicians who take political stances that are completely immoral, completely immoral, and scandalous to the faithful. When a politician gets up and claims that they are practicing their Catholic faith and radically promoting the destruction of human life from conception until natural death, or well, let me back that and say that a little more clearly, when they are promoting the destruction of human life from conception up until the point of birth, to say that more clearly, or promoting the destruction of human life through euthanasia. That's immoral. And for a Catholic, to, for someone to say that they're Catholic, to proclaim that is scandalous. It can be scandalous to the faithful and confusing. And that's when we have the right to be able to speak, just like St. Stanislaus did, just like St. John the Baptist did, just like St. Thomas More did, just like St. Thomas Becket did. We have the right and the obligation to do that. So anyway, but for most of you though, you're not necessarily called to do that. You don't have that responsibility necessarily, but you are called to witness to your faith. I want to give you just a little example of how someone witnessed to their faith just recently. And this was, uh, comes from one of our Marian helpers. So some of you may know that I served at one of the Marian parishes, and it's specifically it's the Marian parish in Darien, Illinois, called Our Lady of Peace. And um, there was a, uh, a woman there who was a Marian helper. She loves Divine Mercy, and so she was planning for Divine Mercy Sunday at Our Lady of Peace. Um, it was Saturday, and it was the Saturday before Divine Mercy Sunday. So anyway, um, there was this crazy accident that happened. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm uh, Father Mike Kalea is, is a good friend of hers. He was at Our Lady of Peace with me when I was there, and he got a text from her where she described what happened, and Father Michael passed it on to me, so I'm kind of summarizing here, but, um, but anyway, she was there setting up, and all of a sudden she heard these, like, boom, you know, these crashes, and so she went out, and she saw this car somehow um, was flipped over 
got flipped over and ended up crashing into a tree. It was like flipped over. The, if you're watching this, you can see the picture of it. So it was a pretty big deal car accident and the person was thrown out of the car, basically lying near death while, you know, there. And so she runs out and while, you know, um, she starts, she, she's taking a video of this, but while she's doing it, you know, everybody's around there taking videos, uh, pictures or whatever. And so she, but she starts like praying the memorare. Then she starts praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet. And she writes in there, like, she's like asking people, are you, do you know Jesus, whatever? And she's trying to get people to pray with her, but they were all too busy, you know, with the phone out, you know, kind of like, you know, do, doing the whole, you know, this, this thing, right? You know, doing, doing that, looking, living life through the phone. And, uh, and nobody would, would do it, which, you know, I'm not judging the people, but it's kind of like, I was like, wow, that's a really nice witness of faith. And, you know, I'm sure that her prayers helped this gentleman. And she would go on to relate that, you know, they, they did CPR on him. They brought, they, he, apparently, I think they maybe brought him back to life um, or they helped to strengthen his life. Um, and then it was, she found out he survived. So I thought that was a really cool expression of faith, a good witness of faith. But anyway, um, this is something, again, that as we remember, as we live, or as we are moving through this Easter season, to really focus on our life of faith. How deep is our belief, right? Because faith is an internal act. It, it, it's an assent to what God has revealed. And we believe God because God is God and he cannot lie. That's the basis of our faith. And we make that assent. That's the internal act of faith. We believe there's a God, we believe that he has spoken, we believe what he has revealed to us. And then sometimes that calls for this, calls, C-A-L-L-S, <laughs> calls for this external expression, this witness. How are we doing with that in our life? That's, that's what our readings and the life of St. Stanislaus especially call us to reflect upon and call us to ask for God's help to deepen our faith, to deepen our witness to our faith, so that God may be properly glorified and the truth of our neighbor may be, and the truth of the good of our neighbor may be strengthened. Let us present the Lord our petitions. For all members of the church, may the voice of Christ be our guide and lead us to deeper faith in him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who govern, may God grant them the humility to be guided by his word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened by any kind of difficulty, may Christ shine his healing light upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this assembly, may God create in each one of us a contrite spirit that is pleasing to him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed and for all the souls in purgatory, may they be crowned with the glory of everlasting life in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the members of the Association of Marian Helpers and the Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception, both living and deceased, and for all the intentions they have entrusted to us, as well as all those who call a right to us, may the Lord favorably hear their prayers and strengthen them in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you that you have sent your Son to reveal the truth of who you are and the truth of how we are to act. Increase our faith that we may give a proper assent to what you have revealed to us about yourself and about humanity and how we are to live as human beings. Help us to conform ourselves to these truths. Deepen our acts of faith and deepen our witness to what you have revealed. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, which we offer to your majesty in commemoration of the blessed martyr Stanislaus, that it may lead us to obtain pardon and confirm us in perpetual thanksgiving. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr Stanislaus, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion and thanksgiving. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. From the Diary of St. Faustina, entry 326. Once Jesus said to me, my gaze from this image is like my gaze from the cross. Let us pray. We have received your heavenly gifts, rejoicing at this feast day, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that we who in this divine banquet proclaim the death of your Son may merit to be partakers with the holy martyrs in his resurrection and his glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. So add a quick point, I forgot to mention this during my homily, but when St. Stanislaus was, you know, uh, going against some of the behavior of, and policies, if you will, of King Boleslaus, King Boleslaus first initially started to repent 
Then he went back to his ways, and uh, St. Stanislaus, you know, continued the, the, his preaching, you know, against his immoral actions. And then King Bolasos ended up getting mad and ended up killing St. Stanislaus himself for doing that, which is why we wear, wear red today, and which is the, obviously martyrdom is the ultimate expression of witnessing to our Lord. But I think the, one of the important things to understand with that is King Bolasos did it, not because he wanted another king to get in power. It wasn't politically motivated. It was God motivated. That's why you do it, because it's not just the good of people and counteracting the scandal that the people might be receiving, but it's also for the person who is causing the scandal. They need to be corrected. Why? For their own salvation. Because what happened after King Boleslaus killed St. Stan Stanislaus, um, King Boleslaus ended up uh, doing penance for his, for his actions the rest of his life. I think he may have you know, been one of those things where he retired, he went to a monastery and did penance for the rest of his life in atonement for that act. So this is why when a priest or a bishop, should they decide to speak out against these things, it's not for a political thing, that's a very worldly way to look at it. It's from the eyes of faith, it's a, horror, it's a vertical thing, where you're doing it for the sake of the person, that they might wise up and correct their ways because God is the ultimate authority of all things. The political order is not greater than God and it's not greater than the gospel. It's not. It should serve it. It should serve it. So I just wanted to add that um, as a little addendum, if you will, to my homily. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hopefully you were able to catch our latest episode of Living Divine Mercy on EWTN last Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, if you missed it, that's okay. We have this episode and all the episodes before it on our website, livingdivinemercy.org, that you can view anytime. This is a great show about God's mercy with inspiring stories of people living it in their lives. God bless you and hope to see you on that website.